a new series today and the name of my new series that we're going to be preaching on is what kind of promise is this what kind of promise is this Acts 1 and 1 the former treaties that I have made O Theopolis of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up and, and taken up after that he, through the Holy Ghost, has given commandments unto the apostles whom he has chosen, to whom also he shows himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which says he ye have heard of. For truly, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Mm. Drop down to the eighth verse for me. The eighth verse reads, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the upper parts of uppermost parts, othermost parts of the earth. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank the worship and praise team. Amen for what they do. I want to start a new series today. What kind of promise is this? What kind of promise is this? We want, I want to do a comprehensive study on the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. The Bible uses those terms interchangeably in the Bible, Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit. So I wanna do a comprehensive study on it. I haven't done it in this house because God said we weren't ready. But now we are. I've talked about it in one message, but I haven't done the study that I'm gonna do beginning now. And yes, I'm going to start it this Sunday because I just believe that God's going to let Bishop's message just be in line with the series. So that's going to be an added part of the series, whatever he preaches next week. Amen. Amen. My objective in this, if I can borrow from Bishop Brown, my behavior objective for this series is that we may fully understand the person, Holy Spirit, and all be filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say it again. My objective, my behavioral objective is that we will fully understand the person. Many times we refer to the Holy Spirit as it. 
the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Godhead. He is a person just like God the Father is, just, Jesus, just like Jesus the Son is. He is a person. And so I want us to fully understand the person of the Holy Spirit and all of us be filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. 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 Now, this is why I don't want you to tell me if you feel the baptized now. I just want you to go through my series. Amen. After you go through my series, then we'll see what's up. Amen. Amen. Today, the first sermon in this series is called The Weight. The Weight. Pentecost. Pentecost. When you begin to define Pentecost, the first part of that means 50. Pentecost is a feast that was celebrated before the Holy Ghost came on the scene. It was the celebration of the giving of the law. Moses gave, God gave Moses the law on Mount Sinai. And they celebrated, they remembered that with the Pentecostal feast. Pentecost is 50 days from the last Sabbath Passover. Passover represents when God came through Israel and he sent the deaf angel and God told him, I want you to kill a lamb, put the blood on the, on the doorpost, and when I see the blood, I will pass over your house. So they celebrated Passover. Passover was celebrated for a whole week. The last Sabbath in Passover, from there, you would count 50, and then we would begin the Pentecostal, I'm sorry, the, the, yeah, the Pentecost feast. Amen? Amen. So we read in the text, y'all, that Jesus, after he was risen from the dead, was with the disciples for 40 days. 40 days he taught them about the things of God. And then after that, he took his leave. When he took his leave, he told them to wait in Jerusalem for the promise. Verse 4, and being assembled together, with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, he ye have heard of. So Jesus told them, wait for the promise. He's been with them 40 days. Now we know, because we can read the text, that 10 days later, the Holy Spirit, which is the promise of the Father, came. But at that time, they did not know how long they were going to have to wait. That's right. Jesus just told them, wait. Wait for the promise. Go back to Jerusalem. Didn't give them no time frame. Didn't give them any um, idea that it was going to be on Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was coming. May I propose to you that Jesus spent so much time with the disciples, 40 days, is because they knew nothing of the promise. All they knew was Jesus. Jesus fed the 10,000. Jesus healed the man who was blind. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus walked on the water. Jesus was killed and raised and got up the third day. All they knew was Jesus. And now Jesus is telling them, it is expedient for me to go away because if I don't go away, the comforter won't come. And they're trying to figure out, hold up, God. Hold up, hold up, Jesus. I know, you know, you've been dead and you've you risen, but... Is there anything better than you? Oh, God. Is, is there anything? Can you, see, we can't imagine that because we ain't spent three years with Jesus. Oh, Pastor, I've been saved. Yeah, you've been saved a long time. But they spent three years day and night with Jesus. They saw the miracles. They saw miracles that's not even written in the book. John said, if I had to write everything that Jesus did in the book, it would be too many books for you to read. They saw miracles we, didn't even, we don't even know about yet in the book. I, I want to ask you, Jesus, I know you got a lot of miracles in the book, but I want to know a couple of miracles you did that's not in the book. <laughs> What's well, some of those things you did that's not in the book? Because there's some things you did that's not in the book. Because John couldn't record it all. And, and so they're trying to figure out, what is this gift from the Father that's better than Jesus? 
And Jesus said, well, let me spend 40 days with y'all. And let me expound upon you why he is better. And we're going to get into why he's better. Because one of the reasons, I don't want to get ahead of myself in the series, but one of the things is that Jesus, because he was in an earthly body, could only be with them one-on-one. The gift, which is the person of the Holy Spirit, can be with all of us at one time, and we don't have to be assembled in all the same place. I can be in Africa, and the Holy Spirit will help me. And you can be here, and he'll help you. So the gift is better because he can be with all of us and give us all the revelation that we need. So Jesus said, wait, y'all. Wait. And I'm not telling you how long you have to wait. All I want you to do is wait. Now Webster defines wait as to stay in a place until an expected event happens, until someone arrives, until it is your turn to do something. To, to not do something until something else happens. To remain in a state in which you expect or hope that something will happen soon. That's what wait means. Yeah, some of us are right there. Yeah, some of us are right there. I'm hoping this will happen soon. Can you speed it up, God? I'm, I'm in a waiting mode. So, so they were told to wait, but they were not told how long it was going to take how many of us have a promise from the Lord but he didn't tell us how long it was going to take and the thing is that we cannot look in hindsight above and see like we can see how long it's going to take. Can you imagine that they said he told them to wait. And all they knew we got to go to Jerusalem and wait. But we don't know how long we got to wait. We don't really know what this. We know what the promise is. But we really don't know what the promise is. Because we really haven't experienced it. But Jesus said it's going to be good for us. So we're going to wait. But how many of them, while they were waiting, had anxiety? How many of them, while they were waiting, the enemy began to talk to the minds and said, why are you waiting? What's coming? Can you imagine day nine? (laughs) While they're still waiting and ain't nothing happened? Day nine? When the enemy knows, he he don't know what, he knows the Holy Spirit's coming, but he doesn't know when, but he can sense that something is coming. Can you imagine day nine, what was going through their minds? We've been doing the same thing. We've been praying. We've been communing together for nine days now, praying off and on, because they won't play in 24-7. They won't even in the upper room when the Holy Ghost came. Oh, God. They were only in an open room where they lived at for that time period in Jerusalem. But can you have day nine, all the anxieties, all the pressure, everything saying, why are we waiting? We need to just go back fishing, go do something. And the only thing they had to hold on to was a promise. The wait. The wait can sometimes be difficult. The wait can sometimes be hard. The wait can sometimes seem to cause more anxiety than the promise itself. It's like, just forget it, because I don't feel like waiting no more. I don't need it, God. (laughs) Oh, I know I just hit a chord right there. I I don't need this, God. I don't need this. If I got to wait this long, just, just forget it. I would not be waiting in anticipation for something I just say forget it can you imagine there was 120 of them and between 120 somebody said how long (laughs) somebody 
The, the, can, you, can you go with me for a minute, y'all? Can you go with me? I'm going to try to be brief, but can you go with me? 120. Somebody said day one. Well, Peter, how long do you think we're going to have to wait? <laughs> Somebody day two said, are we there yet? <laughs> oh, God. Day, day three said, you know, we've been here three days. It only took Jesus three days. He raised from the dead. Is he, what, what's the gift? Is it coming yet? Day four, where he raised Lazarus on the fourth day. Can't we get something here? Day five, they said, they said, well, Jesus took God seven days to make the earth. He raised, he rest on the seventh. Can't we get something? 120 people. Oh, God. By day eight, day nine, Peter probably said, just shut up. <laughs> Can you just be quiet? Jesus said, wait. And the only thing that kept them was the promise that Jesus made because they knew Jesus had never broken a promise. Jesus had never let them down. Since Jesus had never let them down, the only thing they had to hold on to was the promise. Now, if you're going to be able to wait, may I tell you, you got to be at the right place while you're waiting. What is the right place? You got to be at the right place physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. If you're going to wait the way you need to wait, oh God. Because some of us don't wait the way we need to wait. Some wouldn't have been at the prayer meeting on Pentecost. They're like, I've been to this meeting all this time. I can skip this one. We've been waiting 10 days. They won't miss me. They will miss the coming of God. Because he said, wait. He didn't say take a break. He said, wait. <laughs> so you got to be ready physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Can I show it to you in the Word? If we drop down to the ninth verse of Acts 1, we stop to the eighth verse, but if you drop down to the ninth verse, it says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld him, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So he can't be seen now, right? But look at verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, he can't be seen, but they're steadfastly still looking. Two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why are you gazing up into heaven? Jesus didn't say, wait, looking up. Jesus said, wait at Jerusalem. He's out of sight. He's gone. And they're still looking and saying, I wonder, is he coming back anytime soon? You got, we think we should wait here a little longer to see if he come back. But that's not what Jesus said, wait at. And the angel had to tell him, why are you gazing in the heaven? Why are you still here? When Jesus told you, go to Jerusalem and wait. Now, I hate to, I, 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 I just got to kind of imagine if the angel didn't say nothing, how long would they still be looking up? <laughs> how long would they still be looking up? And that won't be destruction. How many of us are looking up and God told us to do something else while we're waiting? Well, I'm just trying to see, God, are you going to give me any more word? You'll give me, that's not what I told you. My last word told you, go to Jerusalem. They want in the physical place to receive the blessing. They want in the mental place or emotional place to receive the blessing. Because they're still looking up. Jesus the left us, y'all. I would have been amazed just that he stepped on a cloud and didn't fall through and just went up. I'd be like, can I get one of those Jesus? <laughs> he just stepped on a cloud. He just ordered a cloud. Can you come get me? I'm coming. And the cloud just came. And he just stepped on the cloud and the cloud just took him up. Wow, I'm just 
going on a cloud. Some of, I mean, I know ministries got jets and everything, but I ain't found a ministry yet that got a cloud they can order and just step on the cloud. Take me to New York. I got to preach in New York, and the clouds are going to take me to New York. <laughs> kind of reminds me of Dragon Ball Z, but anyway, I ain't going there. And you, he got a cloud. And taking him anywhere he needed to go, and they still looking. So they won't emotionally, mentally, physically, or spiritually ready. And the angel had to wake him up. Wake up. Why are you gazing in heaven? Get to Jerusalem. That's where the promise is. They got to the upper room and had to choose one more apostle because they needed 12 because Judas had killed himself. They had business to take care of and they still looking and gazing. Jesus, will you coming back? And Jesus told him, go to Jerusalem and wait. Are we following instructions to the letter? Has God told you to do something and told you how to do it? Are we following the instructions? Maybe that's why we're having so much difficulty waiting. Why are they having difficulty waiting? Verse 11, it says, Then returned they to Jerusalem from Mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey, which I looked it up as just a mile. So they had to walk a mile from where they were to Jerusalem. They walked a mile, y'all. They didn't drive a mile. They didn't take a donkey. They walked a mile. They didn't have the cloud that Jesus had to take them back to Jerusalem. They had to walk a mile. They had to get to the place they needed to be to wait because they would not have received anything anywhere else but the place Jesus told them to be at to wait. Sometimes we want to leave certain places. I want to leave this job. I want to leave this neighborhood. I want to leave this church. And God is saying, wait. And you're like, Lord, I don't want to wait. Well, you ain't going to receive what I got for you anywhere else. Because I didn't tell you to go anywhere else. I told you to wait here. I told you wait on this job. Well, Lord, I'm tired of this job. But if you wait, your blessing is going to come. I told you wait in this position. Well, I'm tired of this position. But if you wait, your blessing is going to come. But if you're somewhere else, what you're waiting on ain't going to come to you anywhere else but Jerusalem. I need to ask somebody, are you in your Jerusalem? Are you in your Jerusalem? So maybe you're still waiting and it already came, but you don't know because you ain't at your Jerusalem. So you're waiting for something that's already, already came to pass. You got to be at the right place physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually to wait because you don't know how long the way it is. Not only that. Not only that. But you got to be doing the right things while you're waiting. Can we go to Acts 1 and 14? I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. Acts 1 and 14 says, All of these things, all these with their minds in full agreement, devoted themselves steadfastly, which means continually and dedicatedly, to prayer, waiting together with the women and men, women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brothers. While they were waiting, they weren't just sitting around complaining. While they were waiting, they just won't just twiddling their thumbs. While they were waiting, they had already made up in their minds, we got to wait, so we're going to pray, we're going to fellowship, we're going to worship while we wait. May I propose to you that you make your wait more difficult when you're not doing the right things while you're waiting. While I'm waiting for a change. Well, how are you waiting on my change? Well, I'm just going to stay here until my change comes. You need to be doing something until your change comes. You need to be doing something. Well, what I need to be doing, Pastor, the last thing God told you to do? 
the last thing he told you to do. He promised a change, but he didn't tell you to do anything different. So you got to keep on working. You got to keep on praying. You got to keep on fasting. You got to keep on doing what God has called you to do because that's the only thing that's going to keep your eye on the promise, which is the promise is the only thing that's going to take you through the wait. It's the only thing that's going to take you through the wait. Because waiting doesn't have to be a dreaded thing. When a child is waiting for Christmas Day, it's not a dreaded thing. It's a exciting thing. He's waiting because he doesn't know what's under the tree. So he's in anticipation. What day is this? We got 15 more days. Okay, I got 15 more days of Christmas. He's not complaining. He's just like, I can't wait because I know it's going to be something good. I know it's going to be under the tree. And his waiting is in anticipation. And he's excited. And he's not down. And he's not complaining because he, he has an excitement about waiting. Some kind of way, we have taken the excitement out of waiting on God. Some kind of way would get into this mindset that it's just, I just, I just got to be here and wait. No, it's how you're waiting. I heard a song. I'm just about through. I heard a song when I was looking at Fireproof a long time ago, the movie Fireproof. It says, I worship while I'm waiting. I've learned something, y'all, that the only way I can really wait on God, the way I need to wait on God, I need to worship. Worship takes me out of looking at my circumstance. Worship takes me out of the problems that I'm going through. Worship lets me look at God. And when I look at God, I say he's awesome and I know he got something good for me. I wouldn't be going through all this stuff if he didn't have something good for me. So while I wait, I'm going to worship him. I'm going to worship him because only his divine attributes can get me out of the mindset that I'm in. Because the mindset that I'm in got me worried about this and worried about that. But when I say Think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. When I think about how holy he is, when I think about how awesome he is, I can't help but worship and wait. I need the two W's in my life. Worship and wait. And most of us only got the one. Wait. Because some kind of way, the enemy has disconnected us for waiting, worshiping while I'm waiting. Uh -huh. yes. What made 120 people wait on something that they didn't know anything about? Mm. What made 120 people keep on coming on a daily basis, getting together, having a prayer meeting? I can't get fired to a prayer meeting. They had 120, 10 days in a row. Get 10 on the prayer line, I'm having a good day. Oh, God. They had 120. Oh Every day, coming together praying. What caused them to keep on doing that? And they don't even know what promise is coming. They are looking at the attributes of Jesus and knowing Jesus ain't a liar. And if this thing is better than Jesus, I got to wait. Yeah. So I'm going to worship while I wait. I'm going to worship while I'm going through. That's the only thing that can get my mind off of the situation. Because the more I think about the situation, the more anxious I get about the wait. And the more I begin to doubt that it's going to happen. Because I'm looking at the situation. But the more I begin to worship God, and he begins to talk back to me. Because scriptures begin to roll up on the inside of me. No good thing would he withhold for them that love him. And I know he loved me. So no good thing is he going to withhold from me. So I got to stay in worship. It may take a little longer for me to get it than you. But I know that's not a problem. If I stay in worship, I'm just going to tell you he just saved the best for last. That's all I got to do. That's, I'm going to encourage myself. You're going to say, I got mine. Oh, yeah, you got yours. That little good but I just want to tell you one thing he said the best will last I'm going to curse myself the weight doesn't have to be difficult the weight doesn't have to be hard I got to learn how to worship him yes. while I'm waiting worship him while I'm waiting that's the only way the pressures is not going to keep building and building and building on my shoulders 10 days they were like, is it coming? But every time they went to prayer, whatever built up came right on off. Every time they went to prayer, 
Why are you worshiping God? Why are you waiting? You begin to worship God. All the thoughts that say, this ain't happening and that ain't happening. When you get into worship, it washes away. And God reminds you, I still got your back. I'm still on your side. And worship, not praise. Because praise is going to praise him for what I have. I ain't got it yet. Jesus. That's why I'm having trouble praising him. Because I ain't got it yet. I'm waiting on it. Yeah, he woke me up this morning and he started me on my way. He put food on my table. All but this thing is bothering me, Lord. It ain't got there yet. That's why I can't get up praise. But worship don't look at what I got. Worship looks at who God is. Worship doesn't give me an excuse to stop. Worship says I got to worship him because he's just that awesome and he ain't changed. And if he don't do anything else for me, he's still awesome. If he don't bless me another day, he's still awesome. If he don't do another thing for me, he's still God, Jehovah, the God that provides. Jehovah Nisi, the God that provides. Jehovah Salon, my peace. God, he's still all that. Whether he comes to my rescue or not, now I understand better what Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego was saying. They're like, we'll go in the fire. We're going to go in the fire because we're going to worship. Because <laughs> worship means if he don't deliver me, he's still able to deliver me. And I can worship him just because he's able to deliver me. Have you ever thought about how three men can go in the fire and say, King, if he don't deliver us, he's still able? Because they went in worshiping. They went and worshiped me. That's why God had to show up. Oh, God. That's why he had to show up. Because the king said, I knew we threw in three. But I look in there and look like four was in there. And the fourth one looks like the son of God. What happened? You going to worship me in the fire? I'll show up. Oh, God. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it right there. You going to worship me while you're going through hell? You going to worship me while I look like ain't nothing turning around? You going to worship me while I look like everything going under? I'll show up to your worship party. Because if you going to worship me in the midst of that, because you got to worship me and spirit and the truth, I'll show up. You just sent me an invitation express wise. They worship in the fire. And Jesus showed up in the fire. And they had church in the fire. Oh God, you know why the enemy is tracking you so much? Because he don't want you to have church in the midst of the hell you're going through. He don't want you to have church with everything you're going through. He don't want you to get to the point of worship. And real church happens when you start worship, not when you start praise. The worship will ignite praise. When them boys got out the fire, then they shouted. They were worshiping in the fire. But when they got out, then they had something to shout about. They weren't shouting while they was in the fire. They were worshiping while they were in the fire. But worship got them out of the fire. I just helped somebody right there. I just helped somebody. Worship will get you out of the fire. You want to dance? Wait till you get out the fire. You want to work? You want to have a party? Wait till you get out the fire. But while I'm in the fire, I'm gonna worship. While I'm in the fire, He gonna get glory just because He's awesome. He gonna get glory just because He made me who I am. He gonna get glory just because He put up with me. Oh God, that's that's a 24 hour, seven day a week, 25 hour job right there. He going to get worship just because of that. And I worship him while I'm waiting. The Bible doesn't say anything about them having a praise party. It said they came in prayer. Worship is a form of prayer. Worship is a form of prayer. And the Bible said they steadfast praying. It wasn't a praying asking. It was a prayer, a worship. I don't believe they were just asking God, where's the gift, where's the gift? I believe they were just worshiping God. And while they were worshiping God, this is what caught my attention. Sister, Sister Christine, this is what caught my attention. While they were worshiping God, the Bible said, suddenly. It means I was so much in worship, I forgot I was waiting. Oh, God, you got that. I, I was worshiping God so much, I forgot I was supposed to be waiting. And when I, as soon as I forgot I was supposed to be waiting, here he comes in. Whoosh. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit came in as a wind. Suddenly. Everybody wants to suddenly, but nobody want to worship. 
and it's why I'm worshiping and my mind is on God and I have got all the stuff I'm going to do why I'm worshiping he said this is a perfect time to come in and bless you this is a perfect time to come in and deliver you I want to get to heaven so I got to ask the three Hebrew boys why y'all were in the fire and y'all were worshiping did y'all really want to come out Oh, God. Did, did y'all really want to? Because the fire, the Bible said, the fire loosed their bonds. They were walking. They went in. They were all bound up. And the man put all their clothes on because he wanted them to burn up even faster and even worse. So he put a whole lot of clothes on. But the Bible said they were loose in the fire, walking around. I want to know, did y'all really want to come out the fire? I know you had to come out, but did you really want to come out the fire? Oh, God. Jesus was in the fire. It don't say he came out of the fire with them. It just says Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego came out of the fire. But Jesus was in the fire. I don't know. I might have stayed in the fire a little bit longer. Because Jesus was in the fire. And I was walking around in the fire. I ain't had to worry about the king. I ain't had to worry about none of that. Because me and Jesus walking around in the fire. Having a good time. So I can wait. I can wait if I worship. I can wait and not be anxious, depressed, out of my mind, trying to call everybody. Would you pray with me? Would you pray with me? Maybe if you pray with me, it'll move a little faster. No, maybe if I worship. Maybe if I worship, it'll move a little faster. Maybe if I worship, it'll get me to the point. Maybe if I worship. Because what I found as I'm closing in the story is that although they didn't know what was coming on the day of Pentecost, when it came, it was worth the wait. When it came, it was worth the wait. And sometimes we teach that they were in the upper room. No. Theos believed they were on the outer court because the Pentecost was going around and people heard them in their own language. And they went to see what is this noise. So they went to the outer court where they were assembled together praying and saw them all speaking. And they're like, how can I hurt all them in our own language? These are Galileans. How can I hurt them in my own language? Giving glory to God. That's all it was. They were just giving glory to God in another language. And they understood it in their own language. And the Bible said Peter stood up. They must have been slain because it said Peter stood up. So there must be sitting. Peter stood up and said, we're not drunk. As you suppose. I know, I know I look a little drunk, but we ain't drunk. As you suppose. At least not with wine, in a way. It was worth the wait. I'm just telling you today, it's worth the wait. But I got to get in worship. I got to be in the right place, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And I got to be doing the right thing. I got to be worshiping God. And as I worship God, my weight won't seem so hard. My weight won't seem so difficult. As I'm worshiping God, y'all, as I'm worshiping God, it gets rid of my self-doubt. And self-doubt comes when it's been a long time. When you've been going through a long time, self-doubt comes in. But worship eliminates self-doubt. Because it doesn't remind you about who you are. It reminds you about who God is. And it reminds me how he cares about me. My worship does that. My worship does that. Because I couldn't even get in the door of worship. If he didn't care about me. I couldn't even walk in the outer court. Never, nevertheless get to the inner court. And then the inner inner court. If he didn't care about me. If he lets me in worship. And he shows up for worship. 
I know he cares about me. That's why he had to show up for me, Shat Shat Rack and Abednego. He had to let him know, I care about y'all. I'm showing up. I'm not sending Gable. I'm not sending nobody else. I'm showing up. I'm not sending Michael. I'm showing up myself. Worship don't get you a messenger. Worship gets you the king himself. Worship don't get you one of his, his lackeys. Worship gets you the king himself. When you worship him, he shows up himself to remind you, I still care about you. And I'm going to bring you out. While I'm waiting, I'm going to worship. Come on, rest to your feet all over the building. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know some of you are waiting. I know some of you are waiting. God said, just worship while you're waiting. Just worship while you're waiting. And just like he did it for that 120 who did not know, because your mind's going to try to tell you, well, it was coming in 10 days, but they didn't know it was coming in 10 days. They were in the same boat we are. And what if they had given up on the ninth day? The Bible says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, which means it was coming anyway. It didn't matter if just one person was still waiting on it. He was coming on the day of Pentecost. Your deliverance is coming. You just got to be there to receive it. Your blessing has a time and day on it. It's coming. You just got to be there to receive it. And the job of the enemy is get you out of position. You ever try to put oil in your car? And you're trying to, you don't got no funnel, and you're trying to put it in the hole, and you keep missing? That's how we are. That's how we are. God got, the, God got it ready to pour it in us. And we keep moving. So it, it misses. And then we're trying to figure out why we only got part of a blessing. I'm helping somebody today. You're trying to figure out why you got part of the blessing. I got to look because you kept moving. Well, God, and God said, if you just stood still, I knew where you were. I was pouring exactly where you were. But you moved. Your hand was still there, so you only got a part of the blessing. But I want to saturate you in the blessing. But you size You let the devil move you out the way. And the devil saw it coming down. And said, if I can move him, if I can move him, I can move him. But if you wait on him. If you wait on him. And you wait right where he tells you to wait. And when you get real hard, you just say, Lord, I'm just going to throw up my hands and worship. I can't do nothing else. And as soon as you throw your hands up, here it comes all coming down. He's trying to figure out how God you timed that thing as soon as my hands went up. Here it comes. I gotta wait and worship. And I gotta know. I'm giving you a secret. I gotta know. It is the devil's job to move me. Physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Yes. It is his job to move me. But worship makes me like the tree planted by the rivers of water. <laughs> I can't be moved. Because I'm why is it so good? Because it's by the river of the water. The roots, a tree's roots go down. So the root is connected to the river. So even if I got a drought, I'll still have the roots get nurturement. I'm still being fed. Because my roots, worship drops my roots down. Then when ain't nothing look like it's coming from above, there's something coming underneath. Oh, God, you got to, you got to. And when you don't worship, you don't drop your roots. So you ain't getting nothing from above. You ain't getting nothing underneath. And you dying. But worship will keep you digging deep. I ain't going to say you ain't going to bend. You just not going to break. You're not going to break. Because worship makes you just like the tree. The devil is trying to move you. I prophesied in this house. The devil is trying to move you. Because your blessing is right down the road. 
You're on the other, oh God, you're on the other side of five. <laughs> Good God Almighty. It's 10 days, you're on the other side of five. It's when you get on the other side of five, it's a downhill road. If you're on that side of five, well, you one, two, it'd be a little longer. But God told me to tell you today, you on the other side of five. You at six, seven, eight. Some of you right, right at nine, and the devil's trying to move you out the way. But I come against that suit. Oh, God. I come against them now in the name of Jesus because I'm going to drop my worship. My worship is my anchor. I got two anchors. I'm going to drop my worship. I ain't moving. I ain't going nowhere because I've been through too much not to get this blessing. I'm going to drop my anchor. I'm too close. Oh I'm too close. I, I, I feel Pastor Young's prophecy coming on. She said, you ain't going to need to do all that stuff. God just going to let you speak it. I feel it coming on. You don't have to. Oh, God. Uh, you too close. You're too close. You're too close to give up now. You're too close to your deliverance. You're too close to your turnaround. You're too close to your blessing. To give up now. And God said, just wait. Just wait. The thing about, I know we can do it because know why? The 120, not one of them left. On the day of Pentecost, all 120 was there to receive the promise. And guess what? They didn't have no Holy Ghost to help them stay there like we got. That's what they were waiting on. I'm too close. I'm too close. I'm too close. I'm too close. And I just got to dig in. And how am I going to dig in? I'm going to worship. I'm going to worship. You're right. Oh, I heard you. You're right. You've been talking to yourself. Lord, what do I have to praise you for? Because this ain't working. This ain't working. God said, okay, maybe you don't have nothing to praise me for right now. You really do, but maybe you think you don't. But you can worship me. You can worship me. Praise is like this, y'all. I'm gonna give a definition. Really. Praise is like this. You get a new shoe. You get new shoes and you praise God. But worship is you glad you got shoe feet to put shoes on. See, that's that's worship, y'all. That's that's worship, worship. That's that's worship right there. That's worship. You you ain't worried about the new shoes. You just glad you got feet. <laughs> I walk barefooted because I just glad that's that's worship right there. Worship said, I don't got a three bedroom mansion. I just got a one bedroom apartment. Uh, praise is a three bedroom ma- mansion. Worship is, oh, I just got the apartment. That's worship, y'all. That's 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 worship right there. Worship, praise it. I got a steak. Worship is, it's just oodles and noodles, but it's gonna taste like a steak today. That's worship, y'all. Because to be truthful with it, you eat both of them the same way. Oh, God, I ain't going to go. You eat both of them the same way. What is a steak or what is news? You still like. Good God. It don't matter what it is, a bowl of cereal or a three-course meal. It's still a. It's still the same way. It's still the same way. I'm going to worship while I wait because only worshiping while I wait is going to get me the deliverance every head bow, every eye close oh, I got to get out of here lift those hands to God I'm going to do all this at one time I'm supposed to be done by now but I got to worship it. <laughs> Father God in the name of Jesus I know there are some in this house who are tired of waiting. But this word had told them all they need to do is worship. So as they turn to worship today, their father, strengthen them. Because I declare in this house, they are just a few days away. Oh God, they're just a few days away. They're just a few days away. They're just a few days away from their blessing. So I thank you for it now in the name of Jesus. Now, as we leave this place, we're most certainly never from our presence. Protect us from all harm and danger. Allow us, to make it, allow us to make it to our several destinations all in one piece. And we who do love thee so, we give you the glory, praise, and all the honor. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen and amen. Praise God.